Hello, all you creative geniuses. Okay, this is Shortcuts A Lot for Regular. I am working with craft bundles to show you how to use this. What I'm going to be doing in this video, we're going to click on the SVG import and we're going to be making a t shirt out of glitter HTV or heat transfer vinyl. So I'm going to click on this button and as soon as it decides to cooperate with me, we're going to go take a look at all of the craft uh, bundle goodness that comes in that bundle. Okay. Um, if you have not yet viewed how to unzip that bundle, please do so now. <laughs> Thing just has mind of its own. All right, so here we are. Now we're going to try to pop open where our files exist. All right, now it's participating. Pop open my desktop. And right here, THJ Craft Bundles. And here is my huge holiday craft bundle. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on my graphic, compiled graphics, SVG. Understand, I have Embrilliance's thumbnailer. That is how I am able to view all of these SVGs like this. Okay. So I know I want the foxes. The fox. Let's do, which ones do I want? Let's do this one. And I'm just going to rapidly come, well, as rapidly as this thing is going to let me. I'm going to rapidly come in here and I'm going to get four. The fox up here. One. Two. Three. Four. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start s separating these. Okay. I'm not going to worry about size just yet until I get them all into a position that I like. Okay. So his little legs come down. So I want something that. And I watch for these blue lines. See over here on the right? Watch the blue line come in. There it is. That means that those are even. I'm going to pop this one up, watch for the blue line at the top, see how that came in, and I'm going to slightly move it over. Okay, so I need to go past that a little bit. Now I'm going to bring this one in and watch for the lines. All right, so there's that. Let's go for, all right, so now they're all even. I'm going to come up to edit, select all, and now I'm going to decrease them. So they all fit on my map. Come on. Okay. I'm going to pop them out here a little bit, stretch them out. Okay. Especially this little guy right here. Maybe I'll make him a little chubbier. That's yeah, kind of too chubby. There, that works. Okay. Maybe make this one a little bit longer. There. Okay, so I like the way that this looks. I'm actually going to object merge them because I want this to be viewed as one file in the scan and cut. I'm actually going to pop this up a little bit because I don't like how close that tail is. There we go. All right, so that looks perfect to me. One part of the file is now over. Okay. I also want to add a word. So I need to add a font from the bundle. I only want a temporary load. To get a temporary loaded font in Shortcuts A Lot, you do not install it to your system. 
So I'm going to come in here. Oops, I need to be on my font tab. I'm going to come over here. Oh my goodness. Wait 30 years for that thing to load. Okay, you see load font came up. I'm going to click that. And wait another 30 years. Come on. There we go. All right. So this is going to bring open the screen where I can find a font. I know by viewing these already, let me pull this up. So this is how I can come in here and view these. I just came into my folder structure. So I am no longer in Shortcuts A Lot's folders. I am in my systems folders right now. I'm going to come in here and take a look at my font. I know by viewing this font, just double clicked on it, that I want to use this font, but I want a temporary load, so I am not installing this onto my system. I do know, see, that's pretty. I like that, so I want to use that, okay? Returning to what I was saying, I do know, unfortunately, that there are some people that have, sorry, um, where's the other one that's pretty cool? I think this one that have the automatic loads. As soon as it's on to your computer, it automatically loads. If that happens, I do not know how to tell you to fix it, okay? Uh, other than to only put your fonts on a USB stick, something outside of your computer. Okay, oh, this is the extras. This one's pretty cool. See all that cool stuff it gives you? Awesome! All right, but do you see how the install button comes up here? This is, yeah, that one's got a ton of stuff. See the install button that comes up all oh, right here? So if I was to hit this install, that would install it onto my system. Then when I go into the shortcuts a lot folder system and hit install, that would make it permanent, okay? So I don't want to do any of that. I'm going to exit out of my folder structure for my system. This is now my folder structure for Shortcuts A Lot. I'm going to double click that. And it'll tell me my font has been installed. Oh, there it is. Okay. So now I can go find it. CH something chatting. CH. Let's see what CH gets us. Oh, not H. CH. Channel. Chatting. All right. Come back. All right. So I just came over here and I clicked one time on my T. That allows me to then come over here, click one time. I can't even type. All right, so there is my word. Okay, I know this is the nasty, nasty meaning. Okay, so I'm going to pop it out. I'm going to bring it under here just to make sure that my size is going to be okay. All right. So there is the size that I technically want. Okay. But look, when I float over it, there's those little connectors. How do I get rid of them? I personally come up here to Path Union. And then that, see, there's no more connectors in there. That makes it all pretty light. Okay. If you want, you can come over here and change the color but you don't need to because you're cutting this out of vinyl, or I will be, okay? And we can come up here to the paper tab. Use your custom size scan and cut mat, remember, because if you don't, you're gonna get into trouble. The machine will kick out your file and shut down, okay? So let's see, let's make sure this fits on my mat. Okay, yep, 
fits perfectly. All right. So I'm going to actually go ahead and export it just like this because I'll put my black glitter vinyl down here and my orange right up there. So I'm going to snug this up. And I know I'm going to need a, what is that? One, two, three, a four inch piece of black glitter vinyl. And then pretty much a 12 inch piece of orange glitter vinyl. Okay. I can actually make this bigger now since it's all merged together. There. And call it a day. And because this is HTV, I need to mirror this. Object, transform, flip horizontal mirror. The other one, I will show you how to mirror it on the scan and cut. But this one is done right here. So I just went up to file export. Now I got to come in here and I got to find my stick. There's my stick. Save as file type. Let's change it to an FCM because we don't ever want to use SVGs. Boxes. Save. Or, yeah, enter, whatever you want to call it. And there we go. So that one is done. All right, guys. That is the end of the file creation in Shortcuts A Lot. Please see part two of when we place the vinyl and actually cut it out on the machine and then transfer it onto our shirt. Thanks a lot, guys. If you have any questions, you can ask here on the page or you can find me over at my own private page uh, on Facebook, which is Scan and Cut Canvas and Scale Help on Facebook. Thanks a lot, guys. Hey, everybody. It's Jen. Okay. We're going to get to the Four Foxes video. So I have a shirt. I use Gildan. It is very important to understand that a lot of shirts have sizing in them. They have sizing in them. It's very hard to get your HTV to stick to it. Okay? So maybe half of your stuff sticks and the other half doesn't. At that point in time, you cannot worship. I have found every single time I have done this, the Gildan does not have issues with adhering. Hanes definitely does. Fruit of the Loom definitely does around the collar. Okay, and at least five inches down from the collar or the neck opening. Okay, so I use Gildan. I do not pre-wash mine. Actually, if you talk to anybody that does t-shirts, they will tell you that if you pre-wash your t-shirts, they are no longer considered new and should not be sold, okay? Yes, of course, there is no law against that that I am aware of, but just try not to. Also, when we do this, you will see me pre-press this. If you happen to be, let's say this is just for yourself, pre-press this after you've washed it and you will be amazed at all the steam that comes out of there okay even though you put it in the dryer or you leave it out to hang and it you think it's bone dry tons of steam will come out of this okay so here's my completely unwashed garment this is what I will be using all right here is the glitter vinyl that I will be using for the fox and the glitter vinyl that I will be using uh, for the word with vinyl such as this this shiny side is the carrier you do not want to cut through this okay this helps you place your vinyl onto your media slash t-shirt okay it assists in placement this happens to be a sticky carrier which allows it to stick there are some carriers out there that do not have adhesive on it and oh my god those are terrible okay it's called frosted or most of them are called frosted and I don't like working with those all right um when you place this on your mat to cut it you place it with that shiny side facing down and you mirror whatever you're cutting because when you pull it up this is how it goes onto your shirt okay 
So you're going to place it on there just like this. So then the right side is reading outwards. Okay, so it'll read correctly. Do not be ashamed or embarrassed to put a little sticky note on your machine that says HTV question mark mirror question mark. You will save a lot of HTV if you do that. Okay. The file that I created, I do believe that one may need to be mirrored. If not, I think it's this one. I can't remember which one needs to be mirrored. But we'll explore that on the machine, okay? So let's place this on the map. Shiny side goes down. This is my 12 by 24 inch mat. All machines can cut on the 12 by 24 inch mat. Only the 700, 900, and 650 can scan on the 24 inch mat. And this is a little bit of bigger HTV got the bonus size. Ooh, that's good until your roller runs over it and creates holy heck mess. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm going to grab my scissors and hack this off right here. You don't ever want your media to extend where the rollers go or the rollers can catch it and really, I'm serious, create an absolute mess for you. So, if you want to do like I'm doing here, just grab your scissors and trim it off. That's good. Okay, so here's my orange, here's my black, the shiny side is down, and we are ready to go to the machine. Okay, so here we are at the machine. I'm going to tuck my mat in here, come up here and hit this mat load button. Okay, so that has loaded my mat in there. I know my pressure is always a minus one. My speed is a one. Now my blade depth, it has to be slightly deeper than my regular glitter vinyl and my regular vinyl. It's about what my cardstock setting is. So I change my blade depth. Make sure you fasten this bail down. Okay, so let's come in here and grab my pattern. Boxes. And I'm going to click OK. I need to come in here and change the size of my mat to 24. Okay. Now I'm going to bring you up here so you can see what this mirror button looks like. Maybe get you focused in here. Right up here, this button, the square, circle, and triangle takes you into this screen. Well, doesn't look like there's anything there. I need to slide this down too. That's at 11. That's at 11. Okay. This button, the square with the two arrows. Voila! There is our editing screen. Inside here, we can do just about anything. Okay, right here is the mirror. Watch sake. See how it mirrors it? Okay, so that's how you mirror on the machine. So I'm going to click through here. Okay, cut. And let that bad boy start rocking out. I'll come back when she's done. So what do we do before we eject? Check our cut liners. We want a clean pull. That's a nice clean pull. Let's come down and check our font. Okay. Let's head to the table. Okay, so we're back over here at the table. This is probably one of the reasons I hate weeding. So, how I go about it, I will show you. 
some people will say, oh, use a pen and draw on it. Well, that's nice until that pen rubs off on your arm. Then you got to keep going back and redoing it. This is how I choose to do it because it works every time without fault until you get to the white. White glitter vinyl is the absolute worst vinyl to have to weed. Okay. This is just baby powder and this will not hurt your uh, design nor will it hurt your shirt in any way shape or form. Um, it doesn't matter if it gets on the clothes because it's powder and it'll wash right out. Now the same cannot be said about pens for those of you that think that's a good idea. That pen gets on there you're in trouble. Okay. So, see, you can see the foxes, clear as a bell. You can see, oh, let me wipe this off. You can see the word sake, clear as a bell. And you can see Lakota football, or Lakota Raiders, and number six, Ernst, absolutely clear as a bell. This, all I did was take powder, dump on it, and rub it in just like I did there, just like this. Okay, and then I wipe it off. All right. Therefore, this cannot be messed up. You can't drag your arm through it. You can't mess the lines up. You can't booger this up. Whereas those that use pens do all the time. Okay. So that's why I do not recommend using pens to draw on your vinyl. Yeah, technically it sounds like it would be a good idea until one, you run your arm through it, or two, it gets all over your shirt and ruins it. Okay. And I normally have a little container that I put my powder in with, but that I'm using for uh, rhinestones. So I grab a hold and I just start peeling. Okay, uh, this one, I'm not worried about uh, rescuing my little pieces, saving them, because they're so odd shaped and so many little pieces that I'm just not worrying about it. It would drive me insane to try to save the vinyl on this. Okay, that one, oops. All right, so let me finally. And for your white uh, glitter vinyl, you can use. Uh, some people have used like cocoa powder. I tend to switch and use a light box. And it just takes an awful lot of time to do white glitter vinyl. But this is so quick and easy. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what that is. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weed through all of this and then I will return with a fully weeded something or other here. Okay. So here it is. All weeded out and ready to go. So we'll take this out to the heat press along with a few other things and we will heat press these on to that shirt. Um, I'm also going to heat press a tumbler. I'll show you how to use a heat press on HTV for metal tumblers only. Hey guys, alright, so this is the final make of the files that you have seen us create. This one is for the foxes. So this will be a 
the fox shirt. This is the little baby shirt. And in here we have a tumbler. And this is what I did using the fonts. Okay. So using the fonts in scale and the fonts in um, canvas. Okay. So this is what we're going to get through. Out here using my heat press and a heat gun. All right. Okay, so I have the shirt in here. I'm going to pre-press this. And we'll see if any stuff comes out of it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's a firm press. Nope, there was no, uh, like, moisture coming out of this. Because this one has not been washed. Okay. I'm going to give it a shake. Now this is a clamshell heat press. I'm not a fan of these. And you can see why. I am constantly burning myself on this thing. And this has even slid all the way out. So I just got the center line for my shirt. Okay, so that's going to help me lay my design. Yes, they do have uh, like T-squares things that tell you when your image is square, all that measurement stuff. You can research those if you like. I do have one and I do not use it. That looks good enough for me. I press this and I have it set for firm pressure at 310 for 15 seconds. And we're just going to let it sit and bake. And this is an auto release. It's done with magnets. We'll slide this out, grab a hold here, and peel. Okay, so that looks okay. You can still see my powder. The good thing about powder is it comes off really, really easy. It does not affect the adhesion of my vinyl. Okay, so now I have my word in there. However, I have no more carrier sheet up there. So what I'm going to do is I bring in my Teflon. Okay, it's the full 16 by 20 area. Now I'm going to close this and again let it press for the full 15. So that orange is getting another 15. But that's okay because I let it completely cool before I went and squished it again. We'll let this bake and here it comes. Pull this out, remove the Teflon and be careful because that is hot. Let's take a look at this. Peel that off. Okay, and this, this is a medium to higher tack tape. So you don't want to use this to try to transfer adhesive vinyl. But you can keep bigger sheets of that. If you ever need to rescue some of your regular stuff. Okay, so let's cool this for just a minute. I like to press my vinyl a couple times just to ensure that it's going to stick. And a lot of times I will turn my shirt inside out to get the back. And I think I'm going to do that. Okay. It's really important to get a good adhesion. Okay. And this is important too if you do rhinestones. So turn your shirt inside out. Okay, so here's my design. Here's the front of my shirt. Just get rid of the hood and all the strings, all that good stuff. Pull them clear up and out of the way. Let's lay this back on here. Be careful you don't burn yourself if you have one of these. I prefer swingaways. 
And I do have other swing away presses, but this is just one that I have right out here in my little house. Okay. Pull all the wrinkles out of it because believe it or not, you can press a wrinkle into it. Okay, so get it nice and straight. Take that Teflon, put it on the back of it, and go like mad. You don't have to worry about the HTV sticking to the other side of your uh, shirt. It just doesn't happen. And we'll wait and let that backside bake really good. Okay. Take this off. Let's introduce some air in there to get it to cool down real quick. Give it a good shake because it will be hot. All right, and let's take a look at our final product here for this one. And then we'll successfully move through these. Let me pull this out. Oops, wrong way. Okay, so there's our fox shirt. All right, time to move on to the next one. Time to pre-press this little fella. Again, this has not been pre-washed, so you should see no steam, no moisture come out of this. However, you can never be too sure, so go ahead and pre-press every garment. And usually you'll see the steam or vapors come up when you open it. Again, nothing. Okay, so now as it's good and warm, let's start laying our design. Now remember, you cannot have any piece of this design transfer tape lay over the other okay and you see this <laughs> it's all stuck together so we're going to have to do this one piece at a time which means i need to come in here and lower my time so let me come back in here and set my time i almost want to do it for three seconds and see if that'll be good enough. Let's see, is three good enough or is that going to give me fits? Nope, that'll be good. Oh! Nope. Maybe I can weasel that one off of there. Yep. I managed to weasel that one off of there. Alright, so I'm going to keep building this. Oh goodness, I got stuff flying all over the place out here. Okay. Yeah, I think that one's good because I don't want to use an entire carrier sheet. I'm going to replace that tape. Slide this in and give it a press. Okay, we'll see if that's enough. Yes, okay, because you just want to tack it down. Okay, let's go for a little spooky. And the reason you don't want to do the full time is because 
you do not want you do not want that vinyl to melt and if you're baking it for 15 seconds at a time oh lord that is going to fry it So far, so good. No boiled, no boiled vinyl yet. And I want to add in the hearts now. where we can okay now let's add this over everything cover up all of the vinyl and let's nuke it again for three seconds. It is so fragile it does not want to stick down, which makes me happy because that means it's not getting overheated. And that is so critical when doing stuff like this. Okay. Alright, now we can do all of our last ones. Well, no, not all of them. Make sure that is not, nope, that is perfect right there. Okay, this time, let's see, let's cover everything, yeah, that will cover it all. Still allow us to see, mm -hmm. two, three. Remember, even if it says it needs 30 seconds, what we're trying to do here is find a tack down time. So just a time that will tack it down enough to let us move through and put every single layer on here. We have one more to do, and that's her beautiful little eyes. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is let this fully cool via some shaking and introducing air into here. And then I'm going to go in and repress it for the full time, which I'm going to put at 20 seconds. No, the neon vinyl is only 15, so 15 seconds, okay? Okay. That looks good now. 
All right, now for this one, I will go ahead, place this down, come up to my thing, change my time, bump it back up, click through, set it, and go ahead and press. And allow that heat to do its job. Clean up all my carrier sheet mess over here. And ready and pull. All right. Now with this one, I will not do the inside of it because it's had so many different presses. So there we go. There's Little Miss Spooktacular. All right. The final one we're going to get to is the cup. The cup we are not going to do using heat press. Although I do have a cup press, I want to do it using a heat gun. Okay? So we're going to use this little guy and see how well it turns out. All righty. Okay, so now we're going to get to this. and work your way over. sit here for a minute because I need to go get my heat safe gloves. Okay. this HTV to a high enough temperature that it's like being in the heat press. So 
it is releasing from the carrier sheet, but it's not doing it all at the same time. So what I can do is I can reposition this if I need to to help me follow the curve of the tumbler. And I'm applying pressure when I go over it with this tip. And I'm also going to apply pressure with my fingers, which is why I needed this glove. Hopefully I'm still, I managed to work my way all the way dang near off the camera. And I am actually applying very firm downward pressure with my thumb. start on one side and work your way to the other so there's no gaps, no bad stuff anywhere. I see some loosey goosey spots. When you use HTV on these cups, it becomes dishwasher safe, all that good stuff, and you cannot get it off of here when it is applied correctly. And this is actually a really cool way to do it because it allows you to, like I said, move that tape if you need to reposition this. It is so cool. I love doing HTV this way on a cup. Sure, there's a wrapper effect in Scal, but I don't like to use that because it actually changes the physical shape of my letters, and I do not like that. But you can do it if you want. That's totally up to you. I like to have my letters remain whole and true. But if you do this, please make sure you have a leather heat safe glove. I actually have it for both hands. Do not let your tip come into contact with anything either, okay? It will burn. It's very, very, very hot. Ooh, yeah, that's hot, buddy. Ooh, yeah, I can feel it coming through my gloves right now.
That's looking awesome. Okay. Sorry, I had to blow on it. It's got some little fuzzies in it. Okay. I'm trying to get it to lay straight. I don't have my towel out here. Usually I bring a towel with me. Now let's go for the number. Because I have heat safe gloves. I can get that heat really close to my fingers. And people why I wonder why I go through a heat gun every three weeks. This is why. I'll melt that tip right off of there. Okay. Isn't this cool though? So you don't have to have a special adapter. You don't have to have a heat press. You don't have to have anything like that. You can go out and get yourself a $10 heat gun and that actually, in my humble opinion, works the best. Because then that allows you to make adjustments as you need to. It's amazing what you can do when you just start experimenting. I think that's what makes life in general fun. Don't accept the norm. Create your own path. Oh my goodness, is this hot? Woo, buddy. Whatever you do, don't lay this flat on there. Always allow the air to escape one way or the other. So, right now, this is on an angle like that, okay? Don't ever leave it flat. Always allow that air to escape. You can probably see the melty marks. This one has been with me going to classes. So this one's not been used yet. I've managed to go through, I think I've went through about six of these, maybe seven or eight. I love these things. They're so versatile. Okay, I think we're at a spot now. I need to let this cool down because I don't want to burn the motor up. <sighs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> this one's going down too. Look at that. <laughs> so cool. Okay, so let's start flicking it. Oops. Sometimes if you just simply press on it, that will help it stick. <coughs> Excuse me. But please do not try this if you do not have heat gloves. Or just leather gloves. You can go to Walmart and get them for like three bucks, five bucks maybe. Nothing special about these gloves, just regular old leather gloves designed to protect you from heat. The S does not want to let go. It likes its carrier sheet. It likes its camera time. I've known a few people like that. Make 
me nutty batty. I'll grab it and pull. There we go. Okay. Come on, get off of there. Okay. So now I'm going to go through and hit this with some heat. Oh, did I forget to weed that? I think I forgot to weed right in there. Oh well, we won't tell anybody. If they make a comment, I'll hand them my pick and tell them have at it. Now heat and press. I like to get it really, really warm before I press it. Well, really, really hot before I press it. And then it's straight down and up. So don't rub your fingers around. Don't do that. And that glue, once that stuff grabs a hold, <laughs> good luck getting that off. And this is such a cool way to make really cool cups using glitter vinyl. Oh, I love it. Because this is dishwasher safe, kids safe, husbands that... All right. There we go. It is done. Hope you guys like all this stuff. If you have any questions at all, you can ask here on this page. Or you can also find me over at my own page, which is Scan and Cut Canvas. Ouch. And Scal Help on Facebook. Thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy all these awesome files brought to you by Craft Bundles via the Hungry JPEG.